Hello everybody, welcome to Visit SoCal. Today, we're gonna go visit one of the coolest record stores in all of Southern California. We're gonna be going to Alta Loma and visiting Dr. Strange Records. Check it out, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Visit SoCal. I'm so excited because today we're at Dr. Strange in Alta Loma with my good friend Bill, aka Dr. Strange, who's been running this shop since 1988. Well, technically out of his bedroom, is that correct? Yeah, out of my apartment, out of my second bedroom. So yeah, you're 100% right. And I remember down the street. when I worked at Spin Records, that's the first time I heard of you, was uh -huh. that they were buying records from you at Spin Records in Carlsbad. And the oh, very yeah. first time I saw Dr. Strange's logo would be the Voodoo Glow Skulls on their very first record. So I was like, oh, who is this? This is pretty cool. I sadly didn't come to this store until about 1999. But that was the first time I came here and I met you. And it was one of those experiences where if you go to a record shop, you never know who the owner is going to be. You, basically, they're either going to be really nice like Bill or probably not as pleasant. And the greatest thing was, Bill was one of my all-time favorite owners. And getting to meet him was just a jazz. His love for Devo, the Dickies, oh, yeah. so much stuff. We talked for hours the first time I met yeah, you. Yeah, I remember, yeah. And uh, just since then, we've had a friendship. And I also got recommended to come to your store by my friend Joe at Showcase Theater. He said, Showcase. you have to stop at the shop and make yes. sure to, I know this is, we're giving away a little bit, but right back there, I had to go back there and yeah. check out some of the extra records he has in the back. Yeah. And uh, I remember one of the very first things I ever got was a government issue record from him, mm -hmm. and that was probably like 1999, and also I picked up the Dickies. You had to pick up the Dickies, and you're, yes. a, you're a huge, huge fan. Huge fan, that's the first band I ever saw was the Dickies. The Dickies and Stiff Little Fingers are my two all-time favorite bands. In, oh, that's awesome. I remember last time with the punk rock karaoke, you were there, so why, oh, yeah. why weren't you singing a Dickie song? Because I just got nervous. I, I can do things like this, but I'm not gonna sing. Cause Okay, I'll tell you why real quick. I did that once before. Uh, it was at a Doctor Strange night in Redlands. It was Zoinks, Brown Lobster Tank, Game Face, and Rhythm Collision. So me, <laughs> me and my buddy George, you know, we're drinking before the show, hanging out, having some fun. And Brown Lobster Tank did a really great cover of X Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you have a couple of drinks, you're like, oh, I know that song. You know, we could do that song. That's no big deal. It's one thing when the band and you're listening to it is singing it. It's another thing when you get on stage and do it, because there's two parts to that. You know, you're a little tipsy. Um, so anyway, we still did it. And I told my friend, hey, introduce like a super special guest tonight, which was me and George. Big Daddy Gonad and the testicles. They're here. You know, so he introduces us as Big Daddy Gonan and the testicles. We get up there and do X and just totally failed. And I'm just sitting <laughs> like, they're like a deer in the headlights. And luckily, the other guys in the band came over and saved me. So that was still burned in my memory 20 plus years later at the punk rock karaoke. I'm like, nah, I'm not going to let that happen again. So that's, that's why I wised up. I wasn't as drunk that night. Too, so. <laughs> my, my favorite punk rock karaoke uh, moment was uh, the last time they played Steve Soto liked my voice a lot that he made me sing a Motorhead song because he's like, oh, well, you can't sing like that and not sing a Motorhead song because <laughs> yeah. I had originally did a song by Fear. And he's like, no, no, we want you to do the Motorhead oh, song. Oh, that's cool. So it was really cool to have him say, Yeah, hey, he's come a good back. guy. was a good guy. He was a good guy. I loved yeah. him. And hey, you got to see the Adolescents back in the day, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, all those bands I was lucky enough All those bands. To see. Yeah. And then I remember um, you talking about a show that was, I believe, in Upland, California. Was that TSOL playing free, a free gig? That, well, kind of. That was at Cal Poly. That was during okay. high school. I think it was in 82. I didn't believe the show was going to happen. I didn't go. But a lot of people ditch. They went to Cal Poly. It was the day after it rained. So it was like a big mud pit. And, you know, a lot of those punk bands would play high schools. Like Black Flag would play high schools all the time. TSOL would play high schools. Circle Jerks. That was oh, when yeah. it was just starting before the uh, school administration really knew what was going on. And TSOL played a free show, and the very next day it, it happened. I'm like, oh, man, I should have gone. I just didn't think it was going to happen. I'm like, that's too good to be true. Oh. So I didn't, I didn't go to that Dang. show. I know. Well, and that's a weird thing is also I was going to say, but you've seen TSOL a few times. It's huh? always a trip because I never know what Jack's going to look like when he comes oh, out on stage. Oh, man. 
That guy is awesome. I love TSOL. Um, Jack is a great guy, but TSOL, that's one of those bands um, that you could just read the lyrics and it's really um, more like poetry. Oh He's yeah. He's great. You don't even have to have music behind it. He's super, super smart, especially when it comes to, um, to lyrics. Weathered Statues, that was a seven inch that came out in 82 uh, after the um, Dance With Me LP. Great, great seven inch and just great lyrics. I was surprised the first time buying one of their records and all of a sudden there's pianos on it. And yeah. It's a completely different vibe. I'm like, is this the same band? Yeah. But it was great. Beneath the Shadows, yeah. I love that about them. They Every single record they do is is basically different. Their first two are the most similar, but, you know, they started off as just punk rock and they had that real goth, like, kind of Christian death vibe or gothy but punk. And you have to give Jack a lot of credit. He oh, yeah. does a different record every single time. And talking about Jack and Christian Death and bands like that, you do in stores here, and I've been mm -hmm. to a, one of them before. I loved it. Was the fact that you'd have people here to come in, do an in store with some of their favorite bands, and then you do these cool interviews with on the couch. Are you yeah. going to be bringing those back? We are going to bring that back. Yes, because I miss those. Bring that back. And it's going to be way more professional. Uh, this time, it's the same same premise. Uh, I'll send you some of the footage. We did the opening scene, like you know, real camera, the whole thing. It's uh, between the liner notes. It's still okay. on the couch with Doctor Strange. So we're going to have, you know, like Ed Culver trying to get Keith from the Circle Jerks. I know you had uh, the casualties here. Yeah, the casualties. Monkey um, from the Addicts is going to do great, it. Yeah, yeah um, so we're going to do that again. Then we clear all this out. Um, but behind the camera, there's T-shirts. and So we bring the couch back in, and we bring in a, a set. Okay. And we'll have a real camera. Same thing, just a little more professional. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's a good show. I I enjoy it because yeah. you're excited. And that's another thing is a lot of owners, you know, it's, it's about the money. It's not about the love of the music. And one thing about this shop is it's not about just money. It's, it's about no. the love of the scene, the music. I felt so welcome the first time walking in here. And I got to say thank you to the bottom of my heart. Nobody made me feel more welcome in a record store than walking in here first time. When the store first opened, I told the guys, like, make this the Nordstrom of punk rock. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, be nice to people because they pay your bills, and we're all in it together. And, man, all of us here can talk about music all day long. And that's what I love. We like to give a special shout-out because you and me both go and check out the other record yeah. shops. So we want to give a special shout-out to Don from Mad Platter yeah, from back in the day. We, we loved him. He was a nice gentleman. He was a great guy. He's, well, I first met Don in, like, the early 80s when he worked at Rhino. He was yeah. the manager there, and then they sent him over to Mad Platter, which was the place next door to the electric chair before the other one, you know? Yeah. And then he took over a new place called Sounds Like. So that was his yeah. place. Uh, and, and that anyway. was in the Arlington business yes. area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, he passed away, and he was a really nice guy. And then I remember there was Ken from Spin Records in Carlsbad. He was always very nice yeah. about you, he always talked about mm -hmm. you. Then there was, um, I'm thinking about other record shops. There's, if you're a metal guy like me, you want to go to stop by, like there's Downey, they have uh, Dark Realm. Mm -hmm. And then way back in the day, I remember seeing things when I was a kid. I wanted, what is licorice pizza? I kept thinking, what is that? I want to go stop in there. And I remember the first time walking in there and seeing an Iron Maiden uh, mock-up, like a big poster. Yeah. And it was 1986. It was somewhere in time. And I bought that record just because of the cover. And so that also happened when I was a kid. I saw the... Dead Kennedy's album, In God We Trust, I had to buy it just because of the album cover. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, what is that? I want that. I didn't even know who they were. And yeah. the same thing happened with Devo. I was like, what is that? I want that. You mm -hmm. know, it was a funny looking cover. Yeah. And it was just, that's, and I didn't know it was just Whip It. It was a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, and yeah. And that was their second record, which I don't have here, but we have to point out there is some Devo right here. The This is the third, second. Or that's no, the third record. Third record. Pretty much right. There are fifth. more Devo records coming in. Um, yeah, just real briefly, Licorice Pizza was a small or a mid-sized chain. You know, you know, it's funny, a few months ago, two of the managers that worked at Licorice Pizza came in. I mean, they're like in their 60s and super cool. They had a stack of crazy rare records. Licorice Pizza put out the Black Flag 7-inch, Thirsty and Miserable for oh, wow. free. You just walked in the store, here's a Black Flag record, here's a Black Flag record. That was an 82. Well, you definitely wouldn't be Thirsty and Miserable by getting it free. You know? Oh, man, that thing goes for over 100 bucks, but they... They were like a precursor, or at the same time as Warehouse and Music Plus, and then Licorice Pizza got bought out by Sam Goody. I think that was only a West Coast thing. I don't know okay. if they ever made it, but they were a big store, and they have a lot of great, great records. They brought in, I bought my first punk records there, Licorice Pizza on Mountain and Foothill. I remember getting a, uh, a Buzzcock 7-inch. Okay, back then, too, uh, an import record was 99 cents. I got a 
I got a Buzzcocks just because of the artwork, a Damned, 99 cents just because of the artwork, and XTC. Oh, XTC. And, and I only liked one of those records, which was XTC. I didn't care for the Buzzcocks, I didn't care for the Damned, because I was just a kid, like 15. But I later learned to love the Buzzcocks. I'm still not a huge Damned fan. I really respect them. But yeah, you get a domestic 7-inch, 49 cents, import, 99 cents, LP domestic, 399, um, import LP, 599. Jesus. It sounds, but you know what, yeah. though? It's re I was making $1.65 an hour. Sometimes minimum I- Minimum wage. It's all, it's all relative. It's all, yeah. it's all the same. Isn't it kind of a trip that, you know, now we're not that old, we feel no. young. But that we look at our collections, and all of a sudden, our collections are worth probably as much as a car, or even more. Oh God! Yeah. yeah, I think I don't even want to say this on camera. But my collection's pretty big, so I probably get two cars with it. And, oh, and how many things we got signed and yeah. everything? But we don't want to ever sell it. It no, means I, so much to us that it's like, oh, I don't want to get rid of it. No, because it's more. It's more than the record. Records like stocks, kind of in a way. But the record is when you look at a record, pretend that's a record, and you remember who I was with. You know, like the day, oh, I remember oh, yeah. Hollywood, my buddies, and we're drinking or just having a lot of fun. And so that record is like a photograph. You're basically selling a memory. And that's why it's really difficult for people to get rid of records. And they shouldn't get rid of records. I save everything. I got set list, tickets, yeah, tickets. Uh, poster. I'm a big poster fan. I've been trying to get that Devo poster you have over there, but you won't sell it to me. I oh, know. yeah, that one's good. Because <laughs> he, he doesn't want to get rid of it. Love Devo. Exactly. Yeah. And out of the curiosity, since we're talking about first shows, what was the first time you saw Devo? Oh, okay. Well, the first show I saw was the Dickies at the Whiskey. And I saw Devo at a place called um, Peppers up the 9605. is in La Puente. It's just a bar. You know, they're great, man. Mark was on the was on the bar stools just and jumping around. They were really cool. Even back then, always, man, that was such an innovative band, and they still are. They had a big video screen playing their videos, yeah. and they're in front. I mean, that is such a ingenious band uh yeah they're so good the first time i saw them was at the Lollapalooza festival oh. and they were opening for of all people metallica soundgarden and the ramones yes, oh, the, uh, and i gotta point out oh, also here's the cool book i like this book and i want to point out that you can also buy really cool books when you stop by dr strange yeah and there are more on the way i just there's, ordered more yeah and there's i'm two, surprised how many people read I, <laughs> <laughs> or that how many of our customers can yeah no this book um man i like this book it's really cool and if you're a fan of uh johnny it gives you a, a good insight into the band i thought this was probably the best of ramones because he didn't make it like friendly he, yeah he, oh he, yeah, he, yeah, there yeah. Was so much animosity and so much oh my god that, it's, it's kind of interesting story i always feel like the ramones were my beatles and rolling stones mixed For into sure. one growing up i mean i yeah. i learned how to play guitar bass and drums from the ramones that was a gateway drug yes it's a gateway band you listen to them and there are many of those gateway bands you know what i mean and that is definitely one of them oh yeah and the ramones and diva was, was that for me so out of yeah. curiosity you got to see the ramones at least once yeah i did you know what like them, don't love them. I, mean, I really respect them. I like their later stuff better, like Mondo Bizarro. You, wow, see, the most people... I like that see, better. I love the uh, stuff like, um, yeah, the 80s stuff. So I or like I'm it. even going like early 90s stuff. Oh, you even like that stuff? Yeah, oh, I like I some do. of that. I, I love like the production. The last album, the Adios Amigos, has the best guitar sound I've yeah. ever had. I'm like, whoa, that's cool sounding. I saw them on a cool gig, Escape from New York. It was the Ramones and Blondie and Tom Tom Club or Talking Heads or something like that. Yeah, I was going to say, well, that's half of Talking Heads right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was cool. But I, once again, really respect them. But no, my favorites are like just that early 80s and also UK stuff. Dickies, Stiff Little Finger, Circle Jerks, you know, those bands I saw. Wasted Youth, all those bands. Devo, I, of course. I met Keith at a record store one time. Oh, walked right up he? to him, talked to him. He was very friendly and See, nice. See, I hear both sides. Yeah, and no, Keith I was, but I got the good version of Keith. Okay, because so I've heard was, other ones where he's like, oh, wow. But yeah. I think I think he was still partying the first time I met him, so oh, he was okay. in a good mood. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And it was just nice to meet him, and he oh, was pleasant. Yeah. And that's one of those things coming here. You know, I've ran into a few people just walking in here, and it's kind of mm -hmm. cool. You're like, oh, there's so it's an uh, old friend from the Spin Idols, an old band from Carlsbad. Oh, yeah. He was here, Mike. I was like, hey, Mike. It's it's like going back to high school. You run, run into an old high school friend coming yes. to Doctor Strange. And that is totally true with my friends. Being Having the store for such a long time, um, and you mentioned 99, but the store only opened 97, so you weren't that I, late. Cool, I got here just two years after they yeah, opened. Yeah, got here. But this is a great place for, for my buddies from high school, which I'm still in touch with. They come in and, and uh, visit. Uh, my buddy Jeff just came in three days ago from high school. He lives out in Palm Springs, and it's a great... So now I talk to him, and I'll tell all the other guys, oh, Jeff came in, and he's doing this, this, and this. So it's like a 
you know. I even ran into my old buddy from Showcase Theater, Big Ron. He oh, was yeah. down the street. So yeah, he good does. old Big Ron might be here. I love Ron. I see him at Staters pretty often. If you see him again, tell him I said I will for sure. Hello. And Big then, Ron is one of my best friends. And if you know guy. Showcase Theater, he yeah. was the biggest, meanest looking guard yeah. with the biggest heart. He's a sweetheart. Yep. Yeah, and then we, Joe Case. Joe Case was awesome. Lived, he moved back to the Midwest. He used to always come in, but he's a good guy. And we see Maria, the snack lady oh, yeah. who he used oh, to be with. Yeah. We see Maria all the time. She's a sweetheart. She comes to all my open mics. And oh, okay. She's just a sweetheart. Oh, I, I forgot that. about her. She We're, was really nice. It's a really small community here, oh, but it's yeah. a huge scene. That's what's crazy. Yeah. So oh, we God. all know each other. Yep. I just want to keep talking and talking about bands, but we need to talk more about the store. So one of my favorite things walking in the store was there was a kitty cat who was so friendly to me. Named he's Jinx. In the, he's in the back. He's in the back. Yes, Jinx. I'll tell you briefly because it's been, he's been here for 15 years. And I know that because we just had to take him into the vet. So I was just coming to work, parking in the parking lot. And then one day Jinx, an all black kitty, was just laying on my car for the warmth of the engine. So I just picked him up and I put him in the store and he's been here ever since. And I immediately, that week, um, because he started gaining weight. I'm like, oh man, I got a pregnant cat. Oh, mm. so I, I took Jinx down to the vet and they're like, no, it's a guy and he's just fat. So I was like, <laughs> all right, cool. So he's just a big fat kitty and he recently had an abscess. He's, he's around here someplace. So I took him back last week and they removed the abscess and I'm like, I don't think he's in the records. And they're like, yeah, it's been 15 years. So Jinx has got to be at least 17. Jinx is like the coolest like mascot you could ever have. He and is. Now, I'm just going to go off camera for a second. I'm coming right back. Oh, uh, yeah. New this, shirts. This shirt made me really happy. Minor Jinx. And if you're a Minor Threat fan, that's a really cool shirt. Or yeah, just a there's a couple fan. Jinx shirts. So the one thing I was going to say is on the back, it should say no catnip, right? Since it's yeah. a straight edge band. <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> And because, you know, because of Jinx, we also have raised over, which I'm really proud of, $43,000 to local animal shelters. And not even local. I've donated to the UK, Costa Rica. So people come in, they buy Jinx stuff, buttons, patches, T-shirts. Uh, we have a bunch of records in the back that just locals will donate. And we sell those for super cheap. 50 cents a piece, two for 75. All that when he goes to the animal fund. Oh, there he is. Oh, hi, Jinx. Uh, all that when he goes to the animal fund. So, yeah, hi, it's sweetie. been over $43,000, and that's all because of you guys. Oh, and Jinx, yeah, obviously had an abscess, so thankfully Jinx is getting better. Yes, he uh, gets the stitches out on Thursday. Oh, hi, sweetie. He, is, he has his own Facebook page. And, you know, this is something else that you don't know. Before Jinx, there was another store kitty. There was? Yes, I have his picture up. His name was Mr. Bunny, and he was here when I bought this place, just hanging out. Um, so he just kind of came with the building, and that kitty was so sweet. He lived to be 21 years old. Oh, wow. And we were giving him IVs twice a day. You, you know you have great people when one their cats are so sweet. They do so much for the local community, helping animals who need it most. Again, you do so much for the community of Alta Loma for helping cats and animals. That's oh, I love just, animals. I'm just so proud to know you as a friend and have a place like this. So please, when you're here, stop by and make sure to add a little extra to your your what you're going to buy, whatever. Every it, penny every makes penny. a difference. Yeah, and they're going to donate to cool things oh, yeah. and help cool kitties like Jinx. And look at this. This is the sweetest cat. Just like he's, Well, he's not always sweet, man. When we first got him, he was a terror. He's sweet now because he's old. That <laughs> guy, he, he still has attitude. He's, a, he's like a perfect punk rock kitty. But he's a real sweet kitty now. I love him. But there's still been times where he just, <laughs> just hits you for no reason. Like, what did I do? That's, that's the best cats. They're just like, we're going to paw you for no reason because uh, we does. want to. Yeah. Oh, no, he's what a, a good sweetie. Kid. And yeah, check out his Facebook page. And the cat has its own Facebook page. People come in all the time <laughs> just to pet him, like locals. Everyone loves Jinx. I believe it, yeah, because every time I come here, the first thing I want to do is see Jinx before I start going yes. through the records. Yeah. And I've found some really cool like stuff from you. I found a original copy of Fresh Fruit for Rotting Vegetables yeah. with the wrong color from you. So I was like, yes, that, that was, was rejected so by Jello. He hated it so much. And that's my favorite, that orange record, fresh fruit for rotting vegetables. Beautiful, yeah. orange, and Jello hated it, and he had a temper tantrum or whatever, and they had to change the color, but I asked like him that. to sign it once, and oh. he's like, you're just going to sell it on eBay. Yeah. I'm like, there's yeah, no like way Jello. I'm selling yeah. that on eBay. Well, that sounds like him. And just so everybody <laughs> knows, this is how I always get all the dead Kennedys to sign my stuff. I get Jello to sign it first, yes. then I go ask the other three, then you can get everybody to yes. sign your record. Don't and show him a record with everybody else's signature, no. or he might get butt hurt. But yeah, he went. we love Jello, and you know what? That he's punk rock, so he yeah, can and have he has that a new pocket. record out. It's yes. really super good. It's amazing. That yeah. album is awesome. So we have him here on Clear. Oh, 
I, I'm going to have to buy. I already know what I'm buying today. I'm buying a copy <laughs> of it because I've been yeah, listening good. online oh. and I need to buy a copy. I wanted to buy the one that I think Winston uh, did some artwork mm-hmm. for it. So he was signing oh, yeah. it. Yes. I, yeah. I love Winston Smith. He has some great, great artwork. Great artist. He, he is iconic. You know his stuff when you see it. Oh, yeah. Especially with Ted Kennedy's. Like, see, he's looking at me like right now, sweet, but I can see he might want He might just go. Like, <laughs> yeah, he might. We love you, James. We'll take the whole time to He's talk still about scary. you. scary, yeah. Oh, you're a sweetie. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, let's talk about the history of this building. Because when yeah. we pulled up, my cameraman, my photographer, they both said, wow, this is a cool building. And I'm like, yeah, it is. It's over 100 years old, and it's a post office, right? Yeah. This building is from 1906. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's one of the very first buildings around here. You know, I was thinking about that, um, and I think about it often. I love, like, History Channel. This building... Older than the Empire State Building, older than the the Sears Tower, and you know, like New York, of course, is ancient when it comes to the U.S. But this in California, this building is very, very old, and this whole area um, got its name, or it's still earning its name from the um, wine producing okay. that it did. The oldest winery is right down the street from 1848. And this whole area lived off of produce, but mostly wine production. It did more than Napa Valley. There's still four active wineries around here. And right across the street, there was the um, Sunkiss Packing, you know, like Sunkiss Oranges. So that was there. And then within walking distance, 100 yards, if that, was Rails to Trails. That was the biggest red line, the biggest light rail system this side of the Mississippi. They pulled the tracks up, so now it's like a bike path and walking path. And right on the other side of that is the Altaluma Packing House. And they're going to re... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Rejuvenate this huge 80,000 square foot place. And this area is destined to be downtown once again. They're going to have shops in there like mom and pops, um, have events going on there. So this whole area is going to be really, really... Something again. It's a really cool neighborhood, and if I'm correct, um, nobody really has any businesses too far up the hill. No. It's basically, like 14th Nick's... Street and below, right? This is it. I mean, there's this, there's those guys, there's dude tools, and the mechanic. It's mixed. Yeah. Mixed residential. So but it's mostly, mostly resi- residential. Yes, yeah, yeah. mostly residential, but it started as commercial, and then as it got older, probably in the 20s or 30s or so, more houses. A lot of the houses down the street. That's where the workers would live as they went to either Altoma Packing or the Sunkist. I also remember there's a museum, and I'm totally spacing on the guy's name, but isn't there a famous woodworker guy yes. that's from here? In right up the street. Um, and we're totally spacing with an on it. M. Real famous woodworker. I think he's from the 30s. I think he recently passed. Yeah. Oh, God. His signs are on, on the 210, and his house is still there. As you can tell, we didn't pre plan it or have yeah, any I don't notes. I remember. But the whole point uh, is, there's a cool museum to go check with out. M. Sam Maloof. Sam, Sam Maloof. Maloof. Woohoo! Thank you to Michael J. Elderman for always helping us out. Yes. The closest store to Upland was Toxic Shock. Toxic Shock was a great place. That was in Pomona. And this store is kind of modeled after that. That's where I went. That was the first real punk rock store. And uh, Bill, his name was Bill as well, he started that in 1979. <clears throat> and for those of you not old enough or not into punk or whatever the case is back then, that took a lot of guts just being into punk and a, a lot of guts just having a punk store is a really tiny store but that's where you got crass records and like Roz would always hang out from Christian death that was a great great and he was a very nice guy too and still oh, yeah. was a nice guy oh yeah no and that's another thing I remember one of those sit downs you had here was theater of pain which is the members of that band oh yeah we have Jatan and, and Rick and they had a great book of the pictures yes. of art I love that book oh, Roz, yeah yes. Very cool. And they're back doing shows as Christian Death. They, oh, wow. had, they had stuff booked and then COVID hit. So I'm sure they'll do things. I again. will say this. I had them booked and I was going to uh, have them playing Riverside. So It'll happen. Yeah, it will happen. So you'll see them playing definitely. And, and Rick is playing for the Radolescence, which is the closest thing to the Adolescence. Yes. They, yeah, it's like, it's all the guys, not all the guys, but it's all it's a bunch like of Agnews of them, yeah. and Casey. Casey. And yeah, it's... And K- Casey's a character. Oh, God sure. damn. Yeah. yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll stop there on Casey. Yeah, we'll we'll not cool. stop the video, but we'll stop talking about Casey because we, we just love him. He's a great drummer and oh, man, he's great a writer. Great. I love the way, yes. And a lot of people know that he was in what? Social D, yeah. Adolescence, and... Uh, the Detours, which is pre... Oh, D.I., of course. D.I., but, yeah. Uh, man, that guy. He sings, plays drums, does, does it all. Yeah. He's one of those guys, yeah. The, the Adolescence record is great because of 
Rick and Casey. And Steve as well, but Rick and Casey, that is a great songwriting team. I tripped out the first time hearing that as a kid because I was like, wait, these guys are obviously into like melodies and like, you know. Oh, man. They have harmonies in this they band. Do. It's a trip to hear a band, you know, from the OC that's punk rock, angry. But yeah, it has harmonies oh, like the Beach Boys. can't help it, like just, you know, they're super good. You can't help but tap your toes to it. Awesome band. You know what? That's when, you know, I'm totally unprofessional, everybody. I had left my phone on. But that's okay because that's a good part of the interview. We that's keep my mom real. calling them. It's like, <laughs> She's like, where are you, Patrick? That's another thing. In this politically correct world, I love your show that oh, you put on God, twice I hate a week. That crap. You hate it. See what I mean? I hate that. So twice a week, he has a Instagram li a live Facebook show where yes. you sell records or show off the new stuff you get. It's QVC for punk rock. It's yeah, it live is. strange every Wednesday and Friday at four o'clock on Facebook and Instagram. And yeah, it's just a bunch of stupid jokes. We sell great records. I make fun of your mom. <laughs> and it's but it's all on good. Good fun. And what's the one rule? Don't ask for this band, right? Well, you can ask, but if there's a lot, like this week, uh, here's UPS Now bringing in more stuff. A lot of stuff Ooh. from Italy. Hundreds of records will be here, so make sure you watch Wednesday, Friday. Um, it depends how much stuff there is. If I don't have a lot, I'm more than happy to look around the store and I write things down that people want, but there's a lot to do. Man, last week we went four hours, and that goes by in a second. It's just hanging out with friends. Four hours. And people all around the world watch, and they all chime in, and, and now those guys come into the store, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, I really look forward to it. I know you just had uh, somebody in here from San Diego. What's the farthest somebody has come to stop by the store that you know of? Oh, Japan. Japan. Germany. The UK. You know why? Um, and it's not just the bands. It's, not, it's people. It's oh, just fans. people. Yeah. No, now, okay, people think in up. general. Yeah, because they're here, whatever, going to Disneyland or they're going to punk rock bowling. There's a, there's a, a husband and wife from Germany. They've been coming here for probably six years because they always go to punk rock bowling. Oh, yeah. You know, so they always make sure they stop by here. But, yeah, want, people from San Diego come in pretty often. I want to go this year because who's playing? It's Devo. Devo. I, know. We're gonna, I think you and me are going to probably be there. Oh, yeah. man. I was mad I missed them recently when they played in, like, MoVal. They played last. Did that happen? Yeah, it did happen. Oh, and I, see, I didn't it. know it did. Yeah, yeah, it I knew did that end big up show. Okay, that yeah. was in Paris or something, Lake Paris or something around there. First time meeting them, they told me, "Oh, you're from Riverside." Yeah, we had an incident in Riverside because they had a big riot out there. Which uh -huh. it's like, of all the bands that have a riot in Riverside, it was Devo. Yeah. And um, this one I got to ask you about is your staff and crew here. They're incredible. They're friendly. They are. How long have you been having some? Some of the people here have been here for like five, ten years. Yeah. And then. How is it so that somebody comes in here, do they just a fan or do you just go, hey, somebody gets a job? Or basically, what would make somebody an employee here at Doctor Strange? How special do you have to be and how much record knowledge do you have to have before you can even ask to become an employee? You got to be a customer. And like that way I get to know you. And everyone that's worked here, except for one person, no one has ever asked to work here. Oh, wow. It just happened to be like, I need someone. Get over here and do this. And then you just start hanging out. So he's had people working here that were coming here for 12, 13 years before they started No, he was only like at the age of 12 or 13. Oh. Now he's oh in my his God. 30s, yeah. So, yeah, he's been here forever. I've seen families come in here. People that oh, are literally I... like a grandparents, uh, the father, and then their kids all buying punk. You know, some punk rock. That's what's so cool. I love that. You know, someone comes in like my age with their kid, and they're buying an adolescence record, and the dad's like, oh, I saw those guys. And they're both into the same music. Music is such a great... Um, it just solidifies relationships and it just it makes the world go around. It really it does. does. It can lift you up out of a really bad day. But I really love when families come in or mom, kid, dad, kid, and they're buying records for themselves. They're both just into punk rock. Or, I mean, not only punk, but mostly punk rock here. And I love it. I also think a lot of people don't point this out a lot, but if you have negative things or if you're angry or hate-filled or something, don't act out on it. Write a song. Yeah. Make something out of it. Make art or do something with it. Be Make, um, I think, like Bad Religion had a song, positive aspects of negative thinking. That, that's the whole point is that mm -hmm. don't be negative, be positive. There's been many people in here, one in particular that I was very worried about, like he was, you know, something going on, like a Columbine type guy, like can shoot up a school. Oh, wow. And because of music, because of him coming in, and because of us, you know, kind of like taking him under our wings, you know, he joined the military, and he's still, you know, mentally ill, but he doesn't have that hate anymore. So that's, that's great, a great yeah. success. But yeah. they do show up, yeah. trust me. Oh, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure once in a while somebody comes and asks for the wrong kind of punk record, yes. and you're like, sorry, you got to go. Not as much as they used to. No, no. And that's, <laughs> they know. Oh, yeah. But even those guys are welcome, because 
I, I'm, I'm a big believer in like, you know, you're not going to change someone's mind by saying, you're wrong, you get out of here. You're going to change your mind by saying, hey, you know what? Why? Let's talk. Why, let's talk about it. Let's and it's, it's like diplomacy, you know, with countries and stuff. Don't alienate. Bring them in. That's how you change someone's mind. Because all you do the other way is just solidify their hatred by saying, hey, you're wrong. You're an ass. No. Why not think about it this way? Or why do you think that? And, and usually there's more to it than just it's, you know. And a big misconception a lot of people think is, oh, punk rockers are angry or yeah. upset. And they're usually the sweetest, nicest yeah, people. They just help the a lady across the street. Oh, they're, God, yes. They're usually the friendliest people of animals. It's just, that's yes. what I love about punk rockers. And back in the day, I remember there was a little bit of like, you'd go to some shows and people were like, oh, you're metal, you can't be here, you're punk. Oh, you God, can't be here. yes. That doesn't exist anymore. It it's doesn't, all together. But yeah. that did happen, man. If you did not look the right way, you'd get beat up. Yeah. Many, like, if you're a mod, or if you're a rockabilly rock guy, whatever, those, or those crowds did new not wave or, mix. Yeah, they didn't mix. But they do now, and that's a great thing. Yeah. I got another question for Mr. Strange here. You had a good time at Spike and Mike Sick and Twisted in Riverside uh, a couple years ago, oh, didn't God. you? Oh, God, thank God for you. Spike and Mike, if you're not familiar, it is Sick and Twisted Animation Film Festival. That's where um, Beefus and Butthead got their start. So many things that are inappropriate that probably, well, maybe nowadays, like an adult swim, but back then, they would not make TV, and this is where, you know, I guess a lot of, a lot of students or, or animators get their start, and yeah. it was phenomenal. And I hadn't gone to Spike and Mike because there was a huge gap of 20, 30 years, and I used to go to them every single year. Then you came in and mentioned that, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Spike and Mike, if you have a weird sense of humor and you love animation, even if you don't, go to Spike and Mike. It is worth it. It's super funny. It is... Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. And it's going to return to the Fox Performing Arts Center on February 4th, 2022. Tickets available at uh, Riverside Live, Ticketmaster, and LiveNation.com. It's going to be a great show. Beautiful theater. And there's, we're going to make it Spike and Mike Day. I think the city is going to make it Spike and Mike Day oh. and give you know all the great praise to Spike and Mike and all that they did for animation and the art and innovation of Riverside and Inland Park. Oh, yeah. And throughout everywhere. I mean, as you said, so many things started there. Even last night, one of the Oscar winners was originally from Spike and Mike's. And as a oh. doctor, he had a show, a movie called Soul, but he originally was started at Spike and Mike's. So it's wow. so cool. That's how cool yeah. that place is. And Riverside is just blowing up in a oh, great yeah. way. Man, it's a beautiful place. And so that's our commercial for today is go check out Spike and Mike's. Yeah, honestly. It's I, Dr. Strange word. approved. No, big time. Love Spike and Mike. <laughs> it's oh, really yeah. funny. <laughs> well, let's uh, real quick. We'll ask a couple more questions. One, Riverside. So, did you ever go to some of the old clubs like the De Anza Theater or Spain? Yes, I did. I saw the Dead Kennedys at the De Anza. I have and... the flyer from there. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I saw the Dead Kennedys two or three times back in the early '80s, but I never saw a complete set. Oh no. Why? Because the Riot Squad would show up, and it was pure riot. And this is like a riot, you know, at the De Anza. It's an old movie theater, and they're ripping up, which was stupid. Even back then, I'm like, they had don't the do that. They're ripping up the seats, and they're throwing them around. And then the riot squad comes in, and the riot gear with their batons. Um, yeah. yeah, it was brutal. I saw them there. I saw them at the Longstorm's Ballroom, which was horrific. <laughs> People, man, people really got beat up there. Is that the, the one, I think DH told me that somebody came in with like a bike chain and was hitting people. And it's like I, I don't know about that, maybe, but they, they shot tear gas in, uh, the cops came in, just and, swarmed the place. And oh, DH, I horrible. think, yeah, he got his uh, shoulder dislocated maybe. at that, that show. Maybe, that was yeah. a bad, I really was thought I was show. gonna die. Um, so anyway, yeah, and then Spanky's, of course, which is a precursor to the showcase. Spanky's, oh, yeah. great place. Um, and then Ezot, and that's, Ezot was great, that's yeah. where Joe Case is from, went over to Corona to the uh, showcase. Well, real quick, on we're talking about showcase and that stuff, and there was a band I remember that was huge back in Riverside. And well, there's two. There was two bands everybody wanted to go see. One was a band called Spiderworks. Everybody mm -hmm. would talk about Spiderworks and good friends of mine. The other one was a band called Voodoo Glow Skulls. 100%. And everybody, and I got to also add a third one was the Skeletons. Everybody would talk oh, about yeah, Skeletons. Skeletons. Yeah. Good one. I forgot. So the, the, all those bands were really big <clears throat> at that time. But the first time I ever saw a Doctor Strange logo was their very first album. The What Is Who This? Is, Who Is Who This? Is this, this is. is. Yes. And I remember loving the Ozzy Osbourne riff at the yes. start. Yes. And also just, Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong. <laughs> and Bob, just, everything about it. And then at the time I was living in Carlsbad, but it reminded me of my original hometown, Riverside. It was Riverside vibe. It they are the, Riverside. It's totally Riverside. And it's, they still are. They still are. They're a great man. 
I love that this is the potty training year, so these are gonna be the early demos, right? Yeah, this has seven inches, we're coloring front, um, fun, and so it, real quickly, yeah, I have a label. I totally, because of Voodoo actually, I reignited the label. There's so much stuff coming out. This week or next week, if they actually promise and ship when they ship, we will have the potty training years and the reissue of Who Is This Is. Oh, it, yeah. <laughs> and also their new record, uh, Live in the Apocalypse, that'll come out late summer. That is a kick-ass record. Has a singer um, from Death by Stereo, Ephraim. It has Brandy from Lamb of God, who is a huge voodoo fan. He has to be on the record, so he does guitar. And also it. does, uh, he sings on it. And, and it's really cool. A lot of people don't realize Eddie is an amazing production guy. He yeah, and he has a studio. studio. Eddie's the man. He really is. Yeah, he's still in Riverside, yeah. still recording bands. Um, did the new one. And it's still Eddie, George, and a couple of the other guys out there in the band, right? It's it's Eddie and George. Some of the other guys are, are have been in the band for a while, but um, well, they still keep in touch with Jerry. Like the new oh, video. Oh yeah, we see Jerry. Yeah. Jerry's cool. He's yeah. in the new uh, Live in the Apocalypse. Oh, the guy from the Penetrators is a, was their old yeah. uh, horn player. Joe, yeah. Joe, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they keep in touch. Joe McNally, yeah. 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 So it's a small world, everybody. And oh, yeah. the whole point is, again, you have this record label. You started it right out of your house. Yeah. And that dream is really cool because it started other people's dreams, like Voodoo Glow Skulls, Government Issue. What were the other bands that were your favorites that you couldn't believe, like you had on your record label? Um, Jeez. Okay, one of my all-time favorite bands that are on the back of my leather jacket Threats from Scotland. They started in 1979, so I got in touch with those guys and did a reissue of their old stuff from the early 80s as well as new. So when I got the Threats, I'm like, oh man, that's so cool. And they actually came out. Threats, The Partisans, Government Issue, of course. Uh, Government Issue was the band because, you know, I was 17, living by myself, trying to go to school, and that was the band that gave me motivation. I listened to, to GI every morning to like, all right, I gotta go, I gotta do it. You know, there's no one here to tell me not to go or, or to go, but listen to Government Issue, they give me motivation and minor threat, but especially uh, Government Issue. So that was really great. There's so many great bands that I, you know, back then and as is today, the whole goal is to put out good music by cool people. Whether you like it or you like it or anyone, doesn't matter. If I like your music and it's, it's good music and I like it, that's, that's a success. That's what it's all that's, about. It's all, yeah, exactly. It's not about making money. No. So bands have voodoo and got them out and face to face. You know, those bands sold a lot of records, but that doesn't mean I like them any better. Nice. In some cases, worse. <laughs> some of those bands. Um, but yeah, I'm really grateful for voodoo for lighting a huge flame. So now I got records from the Dickies coming out. Yes. The crowd. The Three. crowd. Oh, wow. Yeah. I love the crowd. I love the crowd. Yeah. Yes. Black Market Baby, another band I liked in high school, very similar to Government Issue. Um, Hopefully this band wasn't one of the ones you disliked, but I always remember you had a Peter and Test Tube. Love Peter. Yeah, I love that That's stuff. another band I liked in high school. I released five records of theirs. Yeah. Pete, man, their new stuff kicks ass, too. Check out the newest Peter and the Test Tube Babies. They have one called That Shallot, and a brand new one that came out a couple months ago. If you like old Peter and the Test Tube Babies, they are very consistent, consistently great. That's what's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's cool because I had these guys stay with me, like the Partisans, stay with me because of the store. I've met so many people around the world, not only bands, but customers. Uh, my buddy Sandy, him and his wife come over and I'm from Scotland, and it's really neat. That's the best thing about the store is meeting people. Oh, yeah. Know? It's really cool. And I, I want to keep talking. Is there anything else we should talk about that you have upcoming that we maybe forgot? Um, well, we're doing a really cool DJ event. It's the next best thing to having a live show. We do Happy early every... birthday, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't care about birthdays, but thank you. Well, he's every... only going to be 39, everybody. I know. God, and a half. Every other Saturday, right here at this table, big monitors. Um, I'm going to be doing it this weekend. But every other Saturday, just follow us. Um, there's my beautiful wife, Quicksand. Follow us on Facebook and or Instagram. Um, every other Saturday... And we have a taco guy out there in the parking lot. Um, it's free. And it's the closest thing you can have to a real gig. Because it's loud music. There's people. Uh, quicksand dances. Because <laughs> she's cool. And uh, yeah, it's so nice. just all this information I'm telling you about, I know you won't remember. Um, but just 
Follow us on Instagram or, or Facebook. I missed out when you got married here and you had yes, the celebration Yes, that was probably here. a decry play. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't miss it, but you know, I'm just so glad because the two of you are just so awesome together. Oh, I man, just, that was a lot that, of fun. I love seeing you both on the live streams. You just have a great attitude, a great couple. I was even mentioning to my guys, I'm like, I hope one day this doesn't happen, but I could see it happening. You know, some reality TV show going, we're going to go in there and make a show out of Doctor Strange. I've had people ask, but I'm like, I don't have a time for that, and that's it's silly, you know. Mike, it is. my cousin did that. He is the one that brought the best show on TV, Impractical Jokers. <laughs> He's the one that brought that to air, um, and he asked me, I'm like, it, this is my life. This is what I want to do. You, you know, know, I could see though in a few years somebody making like one of those Netflix or yeah. Hulu movies where it's all about Doctor Strange, and it's because you've done so much for the scene. And I know that so many people watching, so many punk rockers and everybody else between are thankful that you've gotten bands like Voodoo off, made sure everybody had a place to go that's welcoming and friendly, and also doesn't overprice his record. Oh, God. I am so that's thankful. That's why I started this whole thing. Yeah, you, people you, no joke. Couch. I, you buy records here that are worth their, you know, they're worth 40 bucks. You're selling them for like 30. Yeah. And that's cool because if you're a collector like me, you really want to buy these things, and you don't want to have to lose all your money. You want to buy more and more. I know. How and it is he being makes it easier yeah. to buy the things you want the most, and rare out of print stuff. So definitely hit him up. Definitely check out the live strange. Yeah, you guys will like that. Wednesdays and Fridays on Instagram, uh, Facebook, anywhere else. That's, That's pretty it. Much just it. that. Also uh, check out his birthday show coming up. Yep. Make sure to buy and pre-order the new Voodoo Glow Skull album. Yes. And their old stuff is awesome, so definitely worth buying. If you don't have it on vinyl, get it on vinyl. Come on. Remastered by Eddie. By Eddie. There you go. <laughs> it sounds really good. It's very bright, and it's really good. Yeah, I highly recommend anything Eddie does, because he always makes it. He even did a death metal record a couple years ago. Yeah, I love he's the a Bruharia great record. producer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Bruharia. a great That's yeah. right. They're buddies. Yeah, yeah they're buddy. that, that's where they record. And it's a great sounding record. I'm like, man, he did a great job. And it's in Riverside. So again, uh, most of the crew here is from Riverside yeah. or Inland Empire. So we're really thankful to push stuff like that and pushing Inland Empire. Yeah. Um, one of my last questions. Did this city give you grief when you first started opening going, oh God, are you guys going to be opening a punk show? What's going to happen? No. Or a punk rock shop? Are you guys going to cause problems? Or were they happy Surprisingly, about it? Surprisingly, they're always pretty nice because this area has really transformed. When I got this building, I was kind of iffy. I was on the fence like, man, this place, this whole area could go for the bad or for the good. And, you know, I got it, painted it, and that kind of helped other people and it's gone for the good. Um, new houses up there, and they're revitalizing the whole place. So, and they're always really super nice. Yeah. Yeah. They, they never gave me grief, and I know they can because I know other places, other businesses, and other owners. If a city doesn't like you, you'll know it. They'll find you yeah. for stupid stuff like your signs or whatever the case is. And I just want to say before I forget to, you know, thank you for all the uh, the praise. But I'm only here because of people like you. And because of people like you. And I'm not saying that, you know, facetiously. I'm 100% very grateful that for 33 years I have not worked. I worked my butt off, but it's not a job. It's just fun. I really look forward to showing up every single day. And that's because of you guys. And I, I really do mean that. So I'm super, super grateful. It's all a family. And, you know, I thank you. Bill, your attitude is infectious. Your store is amazing. And thank you for being on Visit SoCal today. Right. And I can't wait to see you at the next show. It's going to happen. All right. See you guys <laughs> later. Spike and Mike's. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the video. We had a blast talking with Bill. So much information. I, I'm glad you stuck around this long. Thanks again for watching. Big shout out to my crew, Michael J. Elderman, who's taking those pictures. My good friend, Mr. Gary Payne, behind the camera. And music by Chase Walker. Hope to see you on the next show, and thanks again from Patrick Maloney and Visit SoCal.